When I went into post office, it was sold to me at the time as you were in partnership with the business. But you very soon learned that this was a very one-sided partnership. And they just seem to follow the corporate mantra that Horizon is robust and that's it. And everyone else is wrong. They didn't seem to want to engage uh, in useful discussions about how to try and... Uh, improve things. Why did you think that they were trying to keep the failures of Horizon hidden? I think a number of reasons. First off, I think their, their field um, personnel didn't understand it to any great um, depth, and they just seemed to follow the corporate mantra that Horizon is robust and that's it, and everyone else is wrong. Um, they didn't seem to want to engage uh, in useful discussions about how to try and uh, improve things. They, it, it, any that they did make, any approaches they made, were, were very much a surface. It was just for show rather than for, to change things in any meaningful way. It was a variety of it was a variety of things at that time. Without me knowing, the lawyers representing or uh, dealing with my claim, and also the forensic accountants dealing with my claim, put it together, and I was not involved with the figures. And they put it together, and they included an amount for the work that I'd done over the twenty years. It's like another column heading, and that's been totally negated by them. In other words, government doesn't think anything I've done is worth anything. I think the first offer you received was um, shortly before your appearance before the Select Committee in January. Yeah. And you um, said publicly that it was derisory. It was. Still is. I just want to look at what um, the author, Sandy Stephen, um, says. Um, they say, I've reviewed, if we scroll to the top paragraph, please, all the files from the data for Horizon installation until the termination of Bates' contract and read all the subsequent correspondence. Um, I've summarised the salient points. Following um, Bates' assertions against the Horizon system, there were clear attempts made by several people to ascertain, ascertain whether, uh, sorry, if there were systems problems. Eventually, it was decided to write off the debt, and a clear signal was given um, to Bates that all future losses would be recovered. Significantly further training and support was given to Bates at that time. Is that true? Well, it's true. That's what it says, yes. Um, I meant in reality. Yeah, no, I'm afraid it wasn't that way. No. Um, later, it transpired, and Bates admitted um, that he continued to roll over losses um, did you have to admit to this, or were you, in fact, telling the line managers... Sorry, I already it? informed them. Yes. I was, and, I, you know, I wasn't hiding the fact at all. They were well aware of what okay. I was you, So later it transpired, and you admitted, that you continue to roll over losses and had done um, so since the introduction of Horizon. He received a formal letter instructing him to stop the practice. That's true. We've seen that from Mr Wakeley. Um, and make good any losses. That's also true. He did not. That's also true. Losses continued to be made and rolled over, and the retail line manager sought advice from contracts and legal services before terminating the contract. Um, from the evidence contained in the files, it's clear that retail line conducted themselves correctly and acted in accordance with the rules. And then this, leaving aside the anecdotal evidence on file, which demonstrates Bates' unsuitability as a postmaster, was that ever put to you, that you were unsuitable to be a postmaster? No, but they'd appointed me in the first instance. Are you aware of what anecdotal evidence there might be which demonstrates your unsuitability to be a postmaster? <laughs> if, if I, I mean, I have records of that time which were statements from the retail network manager or my current retail network manager at that time, which was Mike Wakeley, to say how well the office was doing and, and well done for all the hard work. I mean, it's, it, it's a nonsense. I, this was 
just them flexing their muscle and just deciding they're right and I was wrong. Uh, they point out po post office has an absolute right to terminate um, a contract with three months notice. That's also one of the true statements in, um, in this document. It was done in this instance following proper investigation, uh, formal warning coupled with support and additional training. Yet you, quote, continue to flaunt and ignore the legitimate instructions from your retail line manager. And then we see a sentence that um, gets cut into the letter that we've just read. The decision to terminate was not only right, it was the only sensible option, which is what led me to think that this was the comprehensive review and investigation that um, had been referred to. Um, it says that you continue to flaunt the legitimate instructions of the retail line manager. Did you flaunt <laughs> his instructions? No, I just pointed out what I was doing and the reasons why I was doing it. But they'd never respond to me. They'd never discuss the issue about data and data access and liability and, holding, uh, and how long that liability lasted for and all the rest of it. I, when I went into post office, it was sold to me at the time as you were in partnership with the business. But you very soon learned that this was a very one-sided partnership. I mean, basically, you do whatever you're told is, is, was your side of the partnership. And they just didn't seem to like it if you raised any queries, even no matter how justified they were. It was, I think it was the lack of real engagement in all of this to try and resolve the problems, address the problems and resolve them, which made me think they just, you know, they've just put up a stone wall on the whole thing. Your last paragraph might be considered to be prophetic. <laughs> yeah, but done um, it. <laughs> I don't suppose I don't suppose when um, you wrote it, you would end up twenty years later sitting here answering my questions. No. Did you get additional training on the Horizon system? Not that I can recall. But the aim was always that of achieving a solution to the difficulties you were experiencing in managing um, transactions and processes um, at the branch. Uh, the Horizon system at the branch has been reviewed and interrogated um, in response to your complaints. And the reports from the Horizon field support team and the MBSC have confirmed that there's nothing inherently wrong with the Horizon system installed at the branch. But was the system installed at your branch, to your knowledge, um, reviewed and interrogated not that I'm aware of. No one ever came to the place. And I, I've always been confused over nothing inherently wrong. That turn of phrase, it just seems a little unusual. Nothing wrong, I can understand, but inherently wrong. It seems like a back covering sort of uh, phrase. This is another communication from you um, to the minister you refer to a reply of the 11th of July where you confirm that further cases can be put forward to review. Um, you say that you recently wrote to MPs who raised questions uh, about um, 47 cases that only ever seem to be um, commented on. And you um, refer in the report sorry, you say the 47 cases referred to in the report comprises of, and then you give a breakdown. And then if we scroll up the page, please. A bit further, please. Thank you. Do you see that your email um, to the minister's correspondence address has found its way to um, the SHEEX, the shareholder executive within the Department for Business Innovation and Skills? Mm. So this is as the email has been produced to us. We can't see um, how it got there. Um, address to um, Martin Edwards and um, Susan Crichton and two other members of the, or two members of the SHEX. And then if we just take that off, please. Uh, Mr. Whitehead within Biz. Um, says 
Marty and Susan, the email letter below from Alan Bates at JFSA to Joe Swinson raises a number of issues which would be helpful for us to discuss with you before drafting a reply. I think a meeting within the next week or so might be the best way forwards, given the range and complexity of some of the issues involved. Uh, did you know or did you appreciate at the time that um, notwithstanding what had been said by uh, government ministers about um, operating an arm's length relationship with the post office, um, there was nonetheless a back channel of communications between the government and the post office? No, no I, I can't say I was aware of that. With your correspondence being copied from um, uh, the government to the post office? I could understand them perhaps having some concern because I was in regular contact with many of the MPs there. Um, but uh, no, I can't say um, so I was aware of it. And if we um, just go to page one, please. So. We can see on this page. Um, uh, emails within the post office, starting in the middle of the page, from Alwyn Lyons to Mark Davis, um, Martin Edwards and Susan Crichton. And she says, when discussing what reply to give, is um, the problem is that the problem we have is that he, that's you, doesn't know we um, have seen the letter. We need to be careful that the minister is not um, seen to be aligning with us by us, help, uh, by us asking us to help her respond. I'll read that again. The problem we have is that he, that's you, doesn't know we've seen the letter, that's your letter, and we need to be careful that the minister is not seen to be aligning with us, that's the post office, by asking us to help her respond. So they're discussing essentially how to play it with you without revealing that the government has sent on your letter to the post office, correct? Seems to be that way, yeah. You say in your witness statement that there were no changes as a result of your letter, um, uh, the one that we've just looked at. Did um, Joe Swinson um, in fact respond to you? I don't recall, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember. No. You say um, in your witness statement that despite you having sent the chairman a full clip of the um, relevant correspondence with notes about each item within it, um, to quote your witness statement, predictably, the response of the post office was to ignore the content and predictably to fail to investigate the real issues. Why, in your view, was it at that the predictable response of the post office? <coughs> it, it, it was the way they tried to deal with things, um, which you experienced through their area manager. I mean, it, it was constantly a post office was in the right, and you were always in the wrong. And um, <laughs> uh, it was... It just seemed to be their nature. Um, you tell us in your um, witness statement that uh, this reply was the, quote, usual box-ticking exercise written entirely from the post office's perspective. Of course, yeah, that's what it was. But the last paragraph concludes, the management team has been wholly professional in the management, deliberation and investigation of your issues. Had, in fact, the issues that you raised been investigated at all? Not that I'm aware of. As far as um, you know, was the data that you are speaking about in these paragraphs that you needed access to in order to understand the cause of an apparent uh, shortfall or an over common to all cases uh, in sub-post offices that um, you later came across, i.e. that no one could actually, in the post office branch, get access to the data they needed to see what had happened? Not, not that not a, I'm aware of, anyway. So. You, I think, um, wrote to your MP, is that right? Correct. Can we look, please, um, at poll 3004-0368?
uh, you tell us in um, uh, your witness statement that um, uh, you wrote to your um, MP um, about your case. That's um, Miss Williams, is that right? That's right. Um, on the 27th of October 2003, and she in turn raised it with post office and with the minister. Um, it, she received um, a reply um, saying that they had taken a decision to review the case in its um, entirety. Uh, you say that that was carried out behind closed doors and didn't involve any contact with you, is that right? That's correct. And then um, she um, wrote again um, to uh, Post Office and um, your MP, as a result of which Post Office wrote this letter on the 19th of January um, 2004. Um, and if we look at the um, second page, Oh, sorry, just scroll up to the bottom of the first page. We can see that it's written by Richard Barker, the then general manager of the commercial network. And go to the top, please. Um, he says to Betty Williams MP, I promised to write to you once a comprehensive review had been undertaken of the issues raised by you. That review has been completed by a senior manager within post office with considerable experience in the handling of disputes and subsequent appeals. The conclusions of that review, which I fully endorse, are that the termination of your contract was done following proper investigation, coupled with proper warnings and with appropriate offers of additional training and support. No evidence was found which in any way substantiates the various claims being made by Mr. Bates. And Mr. Um, Barker uh, goes as far as saying that the decision to terminate your contract was not only correct, it was the only sensible option. The best way is to consider the matter closed. Again, were you um, involved in any such comprehensive review? No, and um, that was one of my big objections. No one ever came and spoke to me about it or tried to understand what the problem had been. It was, as I said before, or as I, it's been recorded, um, it was carried on behind closed doors. So we've seen you write to your MP, we've seen you write directly to um, Alan Layton and the reply, we've seen your MP write to post office and we've seen this um, reply trying to ask questions. Um, it, it suggested in some parts of your witness statement that um, they were being um, shut down or fobbed off by the post office, is that your view? That's the, it seems to be the way the business works, yeah. You say, my main objective for creating the JFSA was to expose the truth. I wanted to create a body of former and current sub-postmasters and branch assistants which could provide a community for all those going through the same experiences with the post office. I knew that I was not alone in my dealings with the post office and the JFSA was set up in order to ensure that other people in the same situation as myself knew that they too were not on their own. As mentioned above, there was a complete lack of support from post office, and I believe those in sim similar circumstances required um, support. Um, I've read elsewhere that one of the reasons that um, you set up the group was that you and others had felt that you had been abandoned by every other organisation, so that you had to group together, is that right? Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I think that's true, um, what you're saying there. It was myself and others as well. It wasn't, I know, I, I seem to take the lead in it, but um, there were a lot of others, certainly in the early days, there was a great deal of support from... Um, Which other organisations had abandoned you and others? Well, certainly the Federation. The Federation was absolutely useless. I mean, they were just another department of post office, as I believe it still is these days as well, but... Um, uh, they, what, why, just, do, why do you think they're just another department of the post office? Well, um, at one time, I believe they had an office in, in post office headquarters, but ignoring that, um, they, it depends which bit we're going. If you go right back to the early days, the 2002s, 2003s, and when I was going to these federation meetings, I know I attended one uh, meeting uh, where a sub-postmaster at the back of the uh, 
meeting group. He started saying, I've just had my post office taken off me, and I'd had problems with Horizon and all the rest. And the Federation, exec, the Federation exec people who were there escorted him out the back of the place.